last year. And so we wanted to inch over into that million mark. And someone told me the guy who can help me scale is that one right there, Depeche. So thank you, Depeche, for your advice that you've given to me um, in helping me scale my ads. And I've had a lot of fun with that. And um, yeah, I need to watch the rest because I've watched just enough to like make me dangerous, um, but probably not enough to make me as as good as I could be. So thank you. It's been fun combining the ad strategy with the, the organic strategy. So I need to spend more time with it though. So, um, but awesome. I appreciate because I've watched like three of the sections and each one of them you had serious value nuggets that were um, helpful in taking my ads further. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what we met maybe three, four months ago now, um, and we were kind of, it's interesting, kind of we met at a time where I was thinking about launching a course um, and you had already kind of launched quite a few of them already yourself and or had some launches yourself. Um, but at the time you were kind of talking about maybe taking your course, make it evergreen, but also doing more with Facebook ads. Yeah. But actually your your success has come through Facebook pages, which I think has been yeah. quite amazing to kind of um, read up and actually see some of the things you've done, which, you know, for, for me, I'm a Facebook ads guy. I'm not a Facebook pages guy. And some people yeah. often get that confused. Like um, I get questions about organic and viral and page. And to be honest, I've not really focused too heavily on that. I, and I get questions about ads and I can answer a basic one. And then I'm like, Absolutely. yeah, well, that's not my wheelhouse. Like, exactly. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, Rachel, um, you run Moolah and your page is called? I have, um, well, Moolah Marketer is my page for my, my the course that I run. Um, but then I also have One Crazy House, Crazy Cat Lady, One Pot Crock Pot. I created Quir Quirky Mama and I created about a dozen other pages. And all of those pages have reached over millions of people. So amazing, uh, amazing. we've, some of them have had millions of fans. <clears throat> Which is like, for me, that's like, um, I look at my fan page right now and I'm gonna come to you for advice on this, but like, um, it's kind of a, a challenge to kind of get the content right, get the pitch right. And actually something which we'll come to uh, later on is how you actually position your page right from the first view as well, which I think is super yeah. interesting as well. Um, so really excited to have Rachel on the call um, in, on the webinar today. So Rachel is a creator of viral traffic sites, some of them reaching up to an over 10 million page views, as she's mentioned. She's also, also a published author, which I think is quite awesome selling over a hundred thousand copies of one of her books um, i'd love to author one day as well so again i'll be coming to you for advice and there's tv appearances to boot with that as well all brought about as a result of the audiences she's built and that's you know rachel's going to take, share a ton of value about that today with us as well in addition to her own success rachel's helped over 2300 other people create content that is irresistible hundreds of them have had virals 31 of them have reached over 10 million people with a single piece of content. That's and usually with under $100 in ad spend. That, that's phenomenal. Um, and you call it the eight, com eight comma club, is it? Yeah, the eight figure club, yeah. Eight it's figure eight figure club. because they, they reach eight, 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 um, eight. Eight, eight digits of people, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so if you don't know who I am, so I'll just quickly intro. I'm Deepesh Mandelia. I run SM Commerce Facebook Ads Agency and also Zassar Digital uh, Facebook Ads Training Course. And you're joining me live as I'm going to be talking to Rachel about her background and her experiences with growing pages virally. Um, and so I'm going to go straight into um, passing off to Rachel to give herself a bit more of an intro. She's a mompreneur. Um, I'm a dadpreneur. So there's lots of... I love it. <laughs> we were just talking before we got on. Exactly. This one um, is a bit of a disaster because my daughter broke her arm right before the launch, which meant I didn't have all of the pieces like ready. You know how like you spend, you know how life works. And then, then my emails go down on day one for like most of the day. And so I'm like, dude, we're just wiping. And then my, I have to go back to the ER for the surgeon for her to be checked tomorrow morning because she has a problem. So I'm like, you know what? That's the benefit of being a mompreneur though, because Absolutely. I can say, Absolutely. you know what? Crap stuff happens. Okay. And yeah. I can pivot and we're still launching. We're still selling, but I can do it on my own terms. And I can say, you know what? We're going to also, you know, sell a different product in two months or do you know you get you have so much freedom when you can control your own business and you can control your audience i mean it's kind of magical that we have we have the life we do so we can say you know what i'm gonna take four hours on my busiest week and take off and that's gonna be okay like yeah kind of fun. absolutely so so tell us a bit about kind of how you started off um as an entrepreneur and kind of getting into pages as well i think it's, it would be quite fascinating to share that <laughs> And then maybe some of your, your kind of biggest successes you've had, some of those numbers and um, anything you've got also um, to share as, as, as 
by way of a kind of freebie for the people that are on the call as well. I, inside the Zoom group for your students, I gave my conversation starters, which we'll talk about like as we go, why those are valuable for you guys. Um, because I think it's going to be the fastest win for your pages right now. So, I mean, I've got other freebies that you can use, but I think that one will be the fastest win for ads people who don't do any organic. Um, but yeah, what I started about 10 years ago and I was an economics teacher. So I already liked like supply and demand and I'm such an ext extrovert, like love people to the nth degree. Um, and I was leaving teaching where I'm surrounded by little people. Okay. They're 17 year olds. I was teaching 12th grade. So 17 and 18 year olds. Um, they were all bigger than me. Cause I'm like a five foot tiny little thing. But anyways, um, I was going to leave teaching to be home with my kids. And I was like, just because money, it wouldn't make sense to, to put three kids in daycare. It just was like, that wasn't going to work. Um, and teach and like, and the hours and all that other stuff. So we're like, okay, it makes more sense for me to come home now. And I'm like, maybe four weeks into it. I'm like, this is not working. Like I'm going to go bonkers. <laughs> Get me out of, so, um, my husband came home and was like, I hear girls have these things called mom blogs. So we're going to get you a mom blog so you could like have people interact. He thought it was going to be like this little side hobby. Okay. So I built it into a business. We built, um, we built that Facebook page with 2.2 million Facebook fans. We did that organically with very little ad spend. We spent zero money until after we had over a million fans. And then we started getting sponsored content that required us to put ad money on it. The way the handshake, all that other stuff went. So anyways, we had, um, but anyways, the first 1 million we grew with zero, um, ad spend and we did it in, we went from 13 K to 1 million in a year and three days. So it's totally possible. We did it then. And so eventually though, that site was about Play-Doh and kids activities. And basically I sold products to moms. So we sold, I remember one of my products we got to, um, I got, we got 2 million page, I think maybe 1.8 or 1.9 million, um, clicks to the website for a product. So how many of you are selling products for people and selling products to moms? What would you do if you had a million and 1.8 million page clicks onto your site? So we sold out of it so fast. And then we switched, we, I mean, we're switching the links to other affiliates to sell out of the products of everybody else's because we had so much traffic, we couldn't keep up with the demand. Um, that one was fun. That one was really fun. Oh. I know, it's so much fun. And that kind of opened our eyes to like, the, the money that's in virals um, in like a huge way. So of course, once you get one viral that does that, you're like, well, where's the next one? Like it, eventually products fizzle and that's not the cool hit product anymore. So now you need the next one and the next one, it kind of became a, so I made 29 of them. Um, wow. And um, I know, so like, why have one when you can have 29? <laughs> but then I got sick of it. So I got sick of it on that site. I think I was about like 24 when I got sick of it on that site. So I was like, you know what? I'm tired of kids activities. Um, I don't want to do anything with Play-Doh or kids or parenting. Get me out of this niche. So I started a new site, um, One Crazy House. We built that to 500,000 Facebook fans in under 18 months with only $5 a day in ad spend. And we did it again. Product, we made it go viral. We, right To this day, I have between one and two million page views on the website every month. And it's recurring revenue. So I don't have to do anything now. I've got all those links up there to sell products. It brings in income every month and I just have the traffic machine. So the, the secret is to build an audience. Because once you have that audience who's like obsessed with Play-Doh, well, they're going to love your next Play-Doh recipe or the next Play-Doh whatever. If you have an audience that's accept, uh, obsessed with household products, which was my second site, um, they're going to want more and more of it. And then I was like, well, you know what? I built quirky mama, which is my first site. And I built one crazy house. My second site using kind of strategies that most people don't have access to. Um, in the sense that I use ad money to begin my second site until I had a couple thousand fans to kind of seed it. Um, I used my friends cause I had a blogging network of people who would like tit for tat, like, Hey, I'll help you. I'll, you'll help me. So I use a network, which a lot of people don't have networks when they're starting. Um, and I call that network now niche neighborhooding. And we, we like teach a strategy on how to do it. But um, anyways, I didn't. So what do you do for people who don't have those things? And so I went to a blog conference and someone's like, don't worry, Rachel went viral. Rachel's talking about building these big sites. You, you don't just listen to this. Like it's a rah, rah speech. You don't need to be able to do this because you don't have all the assets that she has. So she's not talking from like a realistic, anyone can do this 
space. And I was like listening, overhearing this. They didn't know I was there listening. And I mean, like, I knew these people, guys. Um, I listened to this and I was like, I was like, it was almost like I got punched. And I went home and I was like, they hate me. I failed. Like, my husband's like, so make another site. Like, what's the, make another site. Don't spend any ad money and don't use any of your networks. Don't use any of your content. Do it. I'm like, but I can't do it. And he's like, do it with cats. If you can't do it with cats, and you can't do it with people. <laughs> and so I did. I, and I don't even like cats. And I made this awesome audience. Uh, and at one point, we had 3 million in reach on my Facebook page. Wow. Um, and they were buying cat products left and right. And I was like, okay, like, I found cat people. This is awesome. And then, well, anyone can go viral with cats. <laughs> I mean, come on. So I thought, what's something really boring that I could, like, take pictures of? And, and work with. So um, I went to the dollars, like my, like Goodwill, the equivalent. And I bought like seven crock pots for like, I think I spent $35 and bought seven different crock pots, came home, put dinner in each of the crock pots. So it looked like I had a whole bunch of crock pot recipes, right? So it wasn't the same one over and over again. And I started a crock pot site and we grew that one to be viral as well. And um, we have a meal plan now that we have with that crock pot site that we sell. Um, we have crock pot accessories we sell, we crock, crock pot liners. I thought it was boring, but actually there's a whole sub niche of women who love and obsessively are really into crock pots. So we found them, we attracted them to the page, got them hooked and psyched up, um, making crock pot dinners. And anyways, my point is I did it so many times. So then once I've done it so many times, I was still having that mindset of, I don't want to share what I do to go viral because if somebody else does it, well, then they're going to have a crazy cat site. And then I won't have as much traffic on my crazy cat site or they'll be selling the same products and then I'll have a problem with my products. And it was, I don't know. I don't remember what like triggered it that like, that's retarded. Like there's enough out there for, there's enough crazy cat people out there for everybody. Um, there's enough crock pot people for everybody. And so once I started teaching other people, one, it was so much more fun and my business, my websites exploded and my business exploded. So it was really fun to see the transition of that. And so, yeah, so now I've helped um, 31 other people get single posts to over 10 million. Wow. And I've helped um, one person get 3 million shares of a single piece of content with no ad spend. Um, I helped um, a brand get to 45 million in reach on their product so they could sell more of their product. So some of you have heard of Squatty Potty. I helped them with one of their campaigns, reach 45 million people. Um, I've helped two people so far go from zero to 1 million Facebook fans. Um, one of them with under $800 in ad spend. The other person with a very hefty ad spend budget. So we won't even go there, but he went, he went all in. <laughs> so, okay. So that's me. I didn't that's to awesome. Um, so I'm going to go through a Q&A round. So I'm going to go, just fire over some questions to you and then we'll pass it off to the floor. If um, anyone has any questions, we'll take from them as well. Um, and yeah. what I'll do after that is I'll post up your um, PDF for conversation starters after that as well. So it's, they have something to take away with them as well. So my first question that I like to ask is, um, if you weren't doing what you are doing right now with Moolah, your business, et cetera, a clean slate, what would you love to be doing right now? If I could do anything, like if I had to start all over, I would probably go into a viral product because it takes a lot less work. Well, actually I love people too much, but I did do a couple of viral products and I, I had seven private labels at one point, um, but I got bored with them. So I know I'll get bored with them again, but I probably would find a fun product, make some fun, make, make a product line for it, make a niche, a hyper niche group and um, focus on the product. And then I'd get bored and I'd forget I had the Shopify store and I'd forget to do the customer service. And um, <laughs> I need to sell it when I get to that point. <laughs> Cool. So what's the most exciting part of your, um, sorry, just a second. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, can you hear it? I'm sorry. My nanny's here trying to get my keys so she can pick up the kids. Here's my tile. So go on the tile and here's Rachel's keys and see if you can find them. Um, whilst we're going to wait for Rachel, if you do have sorry, questions, guys. Post them <laughs> the in, um, <laughs> comments below and I'll, I'll, I'll read them off after we kind of go through. Um, so yeah, tell me like, what's the most ex exciting part of your day in your business life? Um, what I love is seeing my students have success. So, and having them come to me with like, okay, I'm promoting this product and I'm promoting it in a way that's kind of ugly and nobody's going to like. And so basically I just help them see the product from their reader's point of view. And like the light bulbs come on 
and it's so much fun to see their business change and explode when that happens. Um, yeah. Cool. That's, so that's so tell me about your kind of biggest commercial success with the kind of work you've been doing on, on your own kind of stuff. On my own, we've gotten Moolah. We've had one of our launches in four days. We sold um, $251,000 in with, um, I think it was $2,100 in ad spent. So nice. that was really fun. Calculate yeah. the ROI on that one. <laughs> I know, it was pretty exciting. Um, the next time we did 1,800 in ad spend and we sold 100,000 in slightly over 24 hours. Awesome. Yeah. Um, in terms of kind of the, so I'm guessing there's some kind of formula that you've uncovered for page growth. Talk, talk, talk me through what that looks like. Okay, um, it's essentially three things I love to do. I'd love to write it out, but here, let's see if I can get like scrap paper somewhere. Um, essentially it's three things I love to do and I'm just grabbed a scrap paper guys, but it's first is a bumper sticker. So I've seen a lot about bumper stickers in your group. Um, that, that's something I'm looking forward to listening about. Um, feeding Facebook and then targeting. This is essentially my top tips. Okay. So we've got the bumper sticker. Um, which is essentially you want your content to be something that's about your reader and your audience. So it has to be something that your audience relates to like at a drop of a hat. So what would they wear to call themselves? How does your content reflect who they are? So you're selling sheets. Um, if you're selling sheets, well, what kind of person, your sheets are old and ugly, you need new sheets? That's not gonna look good, right? Um, what's gonna look good is you buy luxury inexpensively, or like you want to put it in a way that makes your reader look really good when they're purchasing the product. So, like um, for me, I was selling one of my one of the times I was selling in my house site. We sold vacuum cleaners, um, and the reason why I picked vacuum cleaners was because I had a high um, affiliate commission on this, and I didn't have to stock it, and I didn't have to do customer care. So I love affiliate because I don't have to, to manage it, but I want affiliates that are going to be worth my time and pay me money. So we sell um, a vacuum cleaner that's made for people with long hair. But I want to do this in such a way, it's not your fault your, hair, your floors are dirty. It's because you got long hair. You got gorgeous, awesome hair. It happens that you break a lot of vacuum cleaners. So here's the solution for you with your vacuum cleaners. I don't want to say your floors are dirty. We don't want to say that. We want to say you have gorgeous hair. They want to, they want to share the fact that they have gorgeous hair. They don't want to show the fact that their vacuum cleaner is gross because they keep sucking up everything, right? Oh. Um, so you want, to, you want to always position your content to make your reader look amazing. And then the next two tips are feeding Facebook. Um, Facebook has a lot of different things like 20% um, text. Don't tell calls to action. You add people, love your calls to action. Um, Facebook doesn't like you being bossy. People don't like it when you're bossy. So imply, suggest, encourage. <laughs> Bet you know someone who, who would like this. That's tag your friend. That's share this. But you're not saying share this. You're not saying tag your friends. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So, and you know, something uh, I, I preach when it comes to ads is nudging people so nudge them to the next action not right down to the sale but if you need no. them to view or click or view a page just nudge them and then every interaction is the next opportunity to nudge them along as well yes exactly it's that nudging it's like a dating relationship you're not going to go straight Absolutely. to hey will you marry me at the first date um you're not even going to go straight to let's go out for dinner you're gonna hi how are you what's your name exactly. <laughs> where are you from what are you doing you know you want to have that small talk right so we we want to have lots of small talk relationships that lead to that sale um, and then the next one is target for activity i think this is a lot of the problems too with ad people is that they target for conversions and conversions is like short term versus long term i don't care about the sales so much like i love selling to people but i don't like this, like I told Depeche earlier, my launch right now, I, my emails were down for like 12 hours. So, um, on the opening day. So like, um, guess what? Like, you know how you have the big burst of people that come in? Well, I didn't get, you know, I, yes, I can retarget them, but I lost a lot of momentum. Right. Okay. So the thing is that's okay because it's a long-term game, right? I have the pixel I can retarget. I've got all these things I can retarget, right? Because it's a long-term game. I'm not going for the sale. I'm going for that relationship. So I've started the relationship with them and it may, I probably won't be able to close them within 24, 48 hours, but I can probably close them next time. So I've got that long game. I want to target them for activity and keep them engaging with me until we're at that point later. So yeah. And I do launch style. So this is another reason why Depeche and I have talked about moving to Evergreen. Depeche, this would be a reason why. <laughs> Absolutely. So tell me about your kind of page setup. So I've read like, 
you've got a, a specific way of setting up your page so it works on mobile on desktop just talk yeah. to us a little bit about that as well um well a lot of people they're what i call the bumper sticker it's four parts of your page and i'll get my scrap paper out again the parts of your page are your profile your name your cover and then your content right So I'm just, I like to sketch guys. It's just what I do. So just, just go with it. Okay. So your name is one part of what I call your bumper sticker. The next part is your profile. Now, how many people can you see and understand what the profile is and what it's for, for your reader when it's teeny tiny on mobile, how many of your audience are coming on mobile? And so if they don't understand what you sell and what you're about with your product name, and they don't understand what you're about with your profile picture, then they probably aren't going to trust your brand as much when they see your product on mobile because they don't know what they're getting if they come to you. It's kind of like those trust factors when you're on a website. You have to have those trust factors that make your website look real and not spammy, right? Um, it's the same thing on your Facebook page. If you look like an, a seller, you're going to kind of make people's spam raters come up. But if you look like a person who's just got or a, or a brand or like a company that's just got a community that has awesome content for them, they're going to trust it a lot more often. So I love nurses um, with a nursing thing here and the word I love nurses, they know exactly who that is and why they should, if they're buying this product, they're supporting other nurses. They've got a reason for it, right? They've got some heart. So that's my part of the bumper sticker. And then the cover, a lot of people have curvy font. You can't read it at a gl glance on mobile. How are people interacting on Facebook? They're like in the grocery store line. They've got their two kids next to them. They're checking stuff out and they're looking at Facebook because they're kind of bored checking groceries out, right? So you want your Facebook feed to be something they can understand while they're doing those three things at the same time. Um, <laughs> and essentially, how many of you have like long calls to action and stuff, lots of writing on your covers? If you do, that's going to detract from your ability to sell your product. So um, yeah, and then you've got your content. And your content has to also speak for your reader. So when they're coming, say, I love nurses, they want to see something that's all about nurses. And that's something that reflects who they are as a person, um, because they're not going to share it if it's not about them. Um, and if you preach to people, they tend to run away. But if you talk about who they are, they tend to share you. So because they're talking about themselves, they're, they're so lazy. They would rather have you write the content that they're going to share to their walls or that they're going to tag their friend in then them have that conversation with their friend. <clears throat> sure, that makes sense. So I'm just looking at the kind of people that have dialed in. So there's a lot of kind of entrepreneurs, people that run Facebook ads, um, those kind of people. So like if, if they're like myself, so I'm running a Facebook page um, for myself. I have, I don't know, six, 700 fans on there. I now want to 10 X, 100 X that. How do I set up my bumper sticker to get the best proposition across, I guess, for someone who lands on my page? Um, you're going to want to basically think of those things. What does someone, if they're going to trust that my product is legit and it's a legit for a um, auto mechanic who works on motorcycles, um, my product, I have a whole product line for auto mechanics with motorcycles. When they come here, this shouldn't be how awesome your product is. They don't care about that. What they care is I'm an awesome mechanic and I want my friends to know that. So when they're going to like your page, they're going to like your page because you're saying this guy, if he uses our products, he's an awesome mechanic. So what does this say about who your reader is? All of this, what does it say about your reader? And then when you're going for conversions, do those in retargeting ads. Okay. So essentially for myself, I'm trying to pitch um, for someone who's landing on my page, what, what they look like and kind of reflecting back. Yeah. Okay. That makes that's sense. It. That's interesting. Yeah, that's what we do. And what's the one thing, what's the one thing like above everything else that people get wrong on their page or you think is the biggest opportunity that people are not getting right? They're talking about themselves or their product because the reality is like um, a friend of mine, he spoke at a conference. So he thought, this is great. I'm going to put this as a pinned post. Nobody else cares that you spoke at the conference. What they care about is what you resemble for them. So what values do you have that they would be able to like, connect themselves to and say, this is me. Um, sorry, the nanny again. Did you find him? No, it, he's going. He, he might be able to tell you where they are in the house. Sorry, I don't know where my keys are. So see, maybe they're in his car. Ask him if he, they're in his car. Sorry, guys. No problem, it's all live, we're all cool with that. No and, um, I, I don't know what happened with the keys. So um, maybe you can drive and get his keys from his office. 
If anyone knows where the keys are, just um, add a comment. <laughs> <in there. laughs> okay, am I, uh, please tell me I'm not the only person who's lost their keys, right? And um, has a nanny. It happens. <laughs> Sorry guys, um, the reality of life as an entrepreneur. Okay, so, um, so what we were saying was- um, so We're talking about talking about, not talking about yourself too much on your page, yes. but- Yes, or your product. So no one cares that your shirt is two ply, whatever, and is double stitched. And they don't care about that. They don't even care the color. What they care about is I'm an awesome leprechaun, man, because I got the green shirt. <laughs> you know, that's what they care about is how they are portrayed with it. Absolutely. Um, in, in terms of kind of the posts that you have on your page, do you warm them up by boosting or do you just go totally organic or do you introduce ads later on? How do you kind of manage that for growing reach and then going viral as well? Um, I like to start with a little bit of ad money to grow my audience. And I do that by targeting where people are most active. So like in the cat niche, who are the cat people who are the most active cat people? What do they absolutely love? What do those, those cat people go crazy for? What do the people who are the most, um, um, the most passionate crockpot people, where are they? Um, and the most active crockpot people. I found out that the most active crockpot people are actually um, in the Latter-day Saints. And I would have never guessed that if I hadn't interviewed my readers and then gone into audience insights and said, okay, not only did they say they're from Latter-day Saints, well, now let's find where in the Latter-day Saints are people the most active so I can target those people and bring those crockpot people into my page. And I would have never thought that if I hadn't interviewed my readers and then played around in audience insights. Okay, that makes sense. Um, what, what tips can you share on not just going viral, but also keeping the momentum going? So like I often see um, posts that do really well in a really short space of time, but then they die out. And I think like I saw something about how you actually get um, pieces to create longevity as well. How do you do that? Oh, we do something with emails and I, um, we, where we stage our emails a little bit. So how many of you guys do where you send your emails out at different, different times to different people? So like the same email, but you're not going to send it all at once to everyone. You're going to send it out in stages, right? It's kind of doing the same thing with Facebook. So like you're not going to send the, the link to everybody at one time. So let's say you have a Facebook group, a page, an ad. You're not going to do all of those at once. Just like you do an email, you strip them out. You do the same thing um, with your page. So you might use, put the link out first um, with ad money. And then after that, you're going to share it into a group, but you're going to wait a day between those. And then after that, you might put it into your email list. And then after that, you're going to share that onto YouTube or something. So you're almost cycling your content between all your properties and you don't do it all at once. You do it all at once. It looks like an event instead. Of, so it's a fast and then it's gone, right? Whereas if you have that long tail, you can have virals that come back months and months later again and again. They have that like long-term um, eyeballs on them. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, we had a girl just two, a week and a half ago, get her post to over 10 million. And she did that not by dropping it all at once, but by starting it and then waiting a little bit, getting some people traction on it and then growing it further. And she did get 10 million in like three weeks. Um, because she she staged it a bit. She had to wait for it to to get nice. start that snowball effect. And do you just stick to Facebook when it comes to promotion, or do you push it elsewhere as well? Um, I'm on all social media platforms, and actually, okay. the tactics I teach um, in social in Moolah, um, I've also used to grow in LinkedIn. I've grown clients in LinkedIn. Um, I've also grown Pinterest. We've made so many pins go viral. It's awesome because Pinterest is a long game, and Facebook mm -hmm. can get that fast game. So you combine the two, and it's so cool because you can send traffic from Pinterest for a long period of time to a post on Facebook that's getting consistent traffic. Okay, so if you know this post, Facebook is not gonna get go viral on Facebook, but when they click on that post on Facebook, you are able to capture them, you're able to target them, and that person's a solid customer for you. Well, put it on Pinterest because now it's sending consistent traffic to that post. And so that consistent traffic um, causes that Facebook to be like, oh wow, this post is bringing in traffic for us. We're going to keep it in the feed longer. So it keeps that, it, it gives you a lot longer um, life to your content. So like my Facebook page right now, um, Moolah Marketer, I'm not spending an insane amount of ads money on it in spite of like launches right now, but I am having a reach of over 200,000, even though I only have 8,000 fans, but that's because I've built it up 
over months of having all these pieces of content that are consistently bringing in little piece here, little piece there. It's almost like you're using SEO and web strategy on Facebook. Awesome, I love that. So I'm gonna um, open up to the um, Q and A from people that are listening in. But before I ask, I'm interested, like, do you run any external tools to kind of schedule all your posts or how do you kind of manage all of that? I don't because Facebook likes Facebook. I mean, I wanna respect Facebook. So they made a scheduler I want to use their scheduler. Like they made it for a reason. It, sh it does the job. I want to use their scheduler. So I don't use other stuff to go into Facebook because it, it looks, it looks to, I think it looks spammy to Facebook because um, now this is just me. I'm not Facebook. I'm not, I don't have an ads person in my pocket. Like Depeche does. I don't go into the office. So, so I love that you do. I'm like, Whoa, um, I'm just a fanatic who spends eight hours a day on Facebook. Um, so I've seen that other third-party schedulers, they are not in the eight-figure club. They're not getting these massive virals. And I've noticed that Facebook has said that they, they throttle APIs a little bit. They don't want an API to have this huge spike, right? So because of that, I don't want to use something that they're going to throttle. I want to use the thing that they say, hey, we love it because it's us. <laughs> so it's true. And, and you know, from my own kind of research, um, in, in my small game playing with pages, I have noticed that when you push a post from a third party scheduler, it has lower reach for some reason. And I wonder if there's something to do with that, that actually using an external tool is a negative signal. You know, like for example, I've got lots of clients where we run their ads and we also, um, I kind of give some advice on organic and trying to get their page, page growing as well, which we support with ads. And what we've noticed also for them is that the external tools do seem to have a bit of a throttled reach. They have a throttle. And I tell people this, but um, the thing is, you don't notice this if you don't have engagement. If you have no yeah. engagement, well, you're not going to notice it's being throttled. If you have high engagement, you're going to say, whoa, wait a second, what happened to that post? Because it's a Absolutely. third party um, post, you'll see it. That's so. right. Um, so I'm just going to go through the comments. Um, hi, Ali. Hey, Paul. Manny's dancing. Hey, Samita. Um, Paul says, how do we follow Rachel? How do we follow Rachel? Oh, <laughs> how do we you. follow Rachel to listen to her success? Or how do we follow Rachel to achieve her success? I love it. Okay, I do have a link for you. Let me go in and grab it to make sure I get yours. Um, I'm not, well, it's in here somewhere. I guess it's not in there. Um, I, I logged into your, whatever it is. Um, the, oh. the magnet, the cat conversation starters that I put into the chat of the Zoom, Cool. Um, Let me paste that in actually. Yeah. What that is, is actually 25 conversations that any brand can start using. And Facebook loves conversations now. Like we did the metrics, like we, we, we have a lot of properties, right? And so we did the metrics and it looks like conversations are, a share is six to seven likes and engagements. And it looks like a conversation is double the worth of a share. Now a, a conversation between two people. So for me, that's like, it's worth like, 12, 24 likes. Does that mean? So for me, I yeah. want lots of conversations on my page because the more conversations yeah. then Facebook's like, whoa, this page is engagement. We're going to show it to more people. And that's why if you go into my page strategies group, you can see people are having growing pages and thriving pages, even with this algorithm. And I think it's because we all focus on engagements before we focus on the content. Um, and so those conversation starters will help you. You can have one engagement post a day, where you're engaging your audience, trying to get them to talk to you. And when they talk to you next thing you know, they're going to be seeing your next piece of content in their feed because they've had a conversation with you. So you're a closer affinity score to that person. Okay. So one of the questions I did have was how do you keep ahead of the Facebook organic game? Like I follow Facebook ads, obviously, and mm -hmm. it's hard work staying ahead of the game, but you guys have been throttled, 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 yet you're still able to get this organic reach. Like how do you stay ahead? Well, Facebook tells you what you want, what they want. So you listen to the newsroom and when they, their newsroom break releases and stuff. And so they say, we're throttling pages, except for pages that are like high engaging communities. For example, um, people that have, a, like they said, a sports team. Okay, well, so we just need to make our fans fanatic like sports teams. We can do that. We got lots of fans like that. I love nurses. I love um, Quirky Mama. You know, all, we, we built pages there. there. We've got fanatic fans. Um, yeah, so it's been fun. Yeah, so I did read about like um, engagement was a big metric. So a lot of people have been kind of knocked back by the kind of like, share, comment kind of thing. And so that 
Is that 100% not working now from what you've seen? Like share comment, what do you mean? So one of the things that Facebook tried to throttle was saying kind of um, like this post. Oh yeah, oh no, that, they saw this that last summer. We saw that last summer. And so we actually have words that you can use instead, which I'm sure Facebook, guys, I got Facebook people in my thing. So I'm sure they're like working to like, Rachel said these words are replacements for like, so use those instead. I mean, like it's a game, they know it. I'm, I'm assuming that they're probably gonna change the algorithm again. But right now there's things like, bet you know someone who. So you can say, let you know someone, tell them about this. You know, because people want to tell other people when they find something and yeah. people want to say, hey, anybody else like me? So that's a normal conversation. They just don't want brands to be bossy. So think about being bossy and think of yourself. If somebody comes up to you and says, like my cup of soap, so Coke, you're like, dude, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with my own drink. You know, you don't want somebody coming up to you in a party saying that. So think of yourself at like the Facebook cocktail party. How would you want people to tell you? about their product that they're selling to you. You probably don't want them saying, hey, like my product, like my product, like my product. <laughs> I actually had a guy do this to me like two weeks ago. Um, I'm not into like natural healing. Like it's not that I'm not into it. It's just like um, like personal ener like energy, getting your energy chakras aligned. Like I'm like, dude, I go to the doctor and I get penicillin. Like we're good, okay? <laughs> like, it's just my personality if that makes sense. So. So anyways, so he was telling me about these natural healing crystals and I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm obviously not a natural healing crystal person, right? So before you're going to tell me to buy your natural healing crystals and like your natural healing crystals and wear your natural healing crystals, you're going to have to like walk me through it. You, you can't go straight into, Hey, I need, look, I can tell you got a headache. You need, here's my crystals. They're only $40. I've got like five of them in my bag. And I'm like, no, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need your rocks, man. I promise. So like, you have to like walk me to that point. You have to start Absolutely. with like, you can't go straight into showing me your bag full of crystals. You have to start with, you know what? I'm sorry. You got a headache. What do you think causes it? Maybe is it dehydration? Get me talking to you. Right. Absolutely. And then, you know, well, I mean, these are all things, you know, those nudges that you talked about. And then that's so true. I see this so many times from people running ads. It's like, it's just pure direct response. They know nothing about you, your brand, your products. It's literally just buy this. It's the best product ever. Click here, get it, and that's it. Um, and then people say, and this is the thing that really winds me up. Facebook doesn't work. Facebook doesn't like us. Facebook is doing this to us. You're doing it to yourself. Uh, you're, you're not giving, and like you said, you're not giving Facebook what it needs. And actually, when you break it down, what Facebook needs, Facebook wants to keep their user happy. Mm -hmm. And when you start from that place and then you work your way backwards, then everything falls into place, whether you're doing organic or paid, make the user happy. Exactly. And then everything exactly. else kind of just falls off of that. And then like, I have the little tactics for organic for feeding Facebook. Depeche has the ad tactics for feeding ads. I mean, guys, the, the, the combination, one of these days, Depeche, the combination of both of them guys is freaking <laughs> powerful. So, I mean, you, you will dominate. <laughs> absolutely. That's the next project. Um, let's grab the next question. Hey, Carsten, hey, Serenus. Um, another question, oh, actually from Imran. How do you know the product can go viral? After you know your audience, you can have a sense. So I knew the crock pot divider. I knew it was going to go viral because I knew my audience. So once you really know your audience, then you can like, you kind of have the sixth sense because you've already made other similar things go viral. So you kind of know what a viral looks like, tastes like, smells like, feels like, right? And so you can feel it coming. Um, it's, yeah, it's really exciting when you have a feeling that the viral's there. Um, but until you know your audience, you really have to get into your stats and get into your loving on your people. And I'm Texan Southern here, love on your people, give them, give them what they're looking for. And this might be giving them other people's products to see what they're biting on. Um, it's not, it's not limiting yourself to just promoting yourself. It might be a little bit of promoting other people to try to figure out what people want to engage with. Um, and then making content like that. So with your products, do you promote affiliate products or do you do your own Shopify store? How does that work? I used to do a lot of affiliates. Like I would probably say 75% of my product sales were affiliate. Facebook changed the way content is now. So now I have to create the content if I'm getting any benefit from it. So this means I can't share. What we used to do is we used to crowdsource content products. So like there would be 1,200, 1,300, 20. 22,000 of us. Um, and one person would make the video and then everyone would use the video to promote that product. And then somebody else would make a video. So that person, it's almost like they had a whole package of content that they could use to promote products. 
Um, and now we have to make the products according to the terms of service. Facebook changed the way it works um, in branded content. So when they did that, my revenue dropped in product sales, but that's okay because um, we've got other things coming. So, but yeah, I just have to, I have to now create the content or hire someone where I own that content that's being po posted. Okay, so, so do you run branded products or do you kind of do drop shipping as well? I did do drop shipping. Um, I had a drop shipping store and it was actually quite successful, but I'm one of those like ADD people. Nobody else here like has like five businesses going at once, right? I have um, lots, five businesses running. <laughs> yeah, I had five. I had like five at the time and um, two of them were doing really, really well. And so the drop shipping was doing well. I was making thousands and thousands every month. Um, and that's, that's some profit. Um, so I was selling t like a ton of products, um, but I had it automated. Well, what happens, um, and I had it all because there were so many emails. I put it in its own email account because I was like, I need an email account for each business. Well, what happens if you have a product that goes viral, say Star Wars light thing that puts the stargazer up on your ceiling and it's right around Star Wars movie time. Yes. Awesome, totally cool to buy a product. Well, the supplier ran out of stock. Also part of life with drop shipping, right? They emailed me. My people kept buying it. Oh, they weren't disaster. sending it. <laughs> yes. I never like got that email. <laughs> so two weeks later, I have a lot of customer service mistakes to clean. And I just closed my Shopify store at that mm. point because I realized I didn't have enough time to, um, I know it was a five minute task, but sometimes when you're an entrepreneur, you can't do that five minute task. Um, right. And I wasn't ready to out hire someone to do it. So I just walked away from that one. And I mean, we paid the people back, we refunded them and then we purchased the product on Amazon and said, had it sent to them. So that was our way of like, we're sorry, we goofed, here's the product anyways. Um, so we still left it in a good way um, or at least in my heart, I left it in a good way. Um, but yeah, so I, I tried, but drop shipping, if I could have, I probably need to partner with somebody so that they can manage that part. And I can just Absolutely. go back to my five businesses that I run like a, a <laughs> a fly or a squirrel. <laughs> so, so with the um, kind of drop shipping, you use the same method of building a page, building an audience, mm -hmm. and then just dropping the products in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. My and drop ship store was Mom Fixes and I built it in a month. Okay. So I built it to 2000 Facebook fans in a month. And the majority, I mean, we had a lot of buyers on there and it was really fun. But um, again- so what kind of return on ad spend were you getting? Oh, I didn't put very much in ads. I put like $5 ads up. So, so I would put a $5 cool. ad up to see which one would bite. And then yeah. if it would bite, then I would find other ways to promote that content as well. The reason I say this is I hear a lot of people saying drop shipping is dead, but I just think that people are not really expanding their ideas on how to actually drive okay. traffic. Drop shipping from China is dead. That was my problem because people don't want to wait three weeks for their product. They want their product tomorrow. So you have to find a way to get them their product tomorrow. Um, so yes, drop shipping from China directly. I mean, just because people don't want to wait for three weeks, unless it's a killer product that nobody else has. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like what I've seen from uh, some of these e-commerce stores is if you're uh, transparent up front and they're willing to wait for three weeks, then you can make it work. But absolutely, like I've done it before where people have bought um, sandals and things like that, and they're just not willing to wait three weeks for something. You can go to your local store or on Amazon to get literally the next day or the same day. Um, but yeah. if it's something that's a bit different, then people are willing to wait. And I think if that, so if that, you're uh, just not doing it right. So if yeah. could you drop ship locally to them? Yes. Could you drop ship even from Amazon? There's like apps that will help you do drop Absolutely. shipping through Amazon. Mind you, you have to then like somehow price point your product is different and better, exactly. but or rather price point the Amazon product, but that one's consistent. So there, there's things you can do. Um, it's just you gotta do it smarter. Exactly. I've got a call, uh, question from Paul. How do you phrase the bumper sticker if you're targeting professionals on your page? Well, what does a professional want others to know about them? That they're good at their job, that, they, that they're professional, that they're, they take their work seriously, that they have enough time to do work and family. They're fine, they're, they're killing it at both. Um, that, they're, that their boss is awesome because they want their boss to see that they're saying they're awesome. Um, you, what kind of things would, would they want the world to know? <laughs> Say it. Absolutely. You can talk for any and every person. Question from Gil. Hey Gil, question for Rachel. Do you combine organic Facebook activity with organic on any other social platforms? And if so, which ones? He's then followed up and said, okay, she must have read my mind there because I think you actually answered that before. Yeah, I do um, SEO and I do Pinterest as well. I, I don't like Twitter. I was on Twitter for a little bit and I think yeah. I grew, I hate Twitter. 
Um, so, and I don't like Snapchat either. Snapchat annoys me. Um, so I did, um, I did Periscope until Facebook opened Facebook Live. So we got rid of Periscope. Um, you know, you just do the things that work. So we have a YouTube channel. Um, we have actually three YouTube channels. Some of them have up to 10,000 subscribers. So two to 10,000 subscribers in all of them. Um, yeah, you do what works, do more of it. Absolutely. Um, question from Ali, any tools on finding niche specific viral content? Facebook search bar. Facebook tells you what's going viral. They're really good. They, they want the engaging stuff put out there more because it feeds Facebook's ecosystem, right? So go to Facebook and ask them, type in the search bar. What's your niche? Type in what you're looking for, go to videos. You, they can tell you which ones have more likes and which ones have more engagement. So follow Facebook, they'll let you know. Awesome, uh, question from Bipin. I'm just starting out in e-commerce and have just started my brand Facebook page which I just realized is probably the opposite of the bumper strategy. Any advice on how best to apply this strategy while just starting out? Um, first off, if you don't know what your readers say, um, sometimes I make a dummy page. So I actually have a dummy page that I do just to test what people say. So like my dummy page, I'll put like, here's four ways that people would, I actually wrote it for a, a call from earlier. This is one that I did. So I had a, which mug are you? This is what I did when I was growing my cat's page. Which mug are you? Are you a cat's mom? Are you a crazy cat lady? Are you a cat rescuer? Or do you love cats? I wanted to find out which, and then I targeted this, that which mug are you to cat people on Facebook? Which ones? And then the people that responded, I found out that these two were the winners. Well, um, this is what I say with my content. And this is what my page is called. Nice. All my content says I'm a cat's mom. Like I literally, the cats are acting like babies, like literally like what does a toddler do? Well, let's see how we can put a cat in that role. Um, <laughs> that's like, that's the content. And then the name is crazy cat lady. That's, they will tell you what they call themselves. Awesome. Love that. Um, question from Imran, what type of posts do we post in Facebook pages for the audience and how frequently? Um, there is no standard of how frequently to post. But I noticed with my students of Facebook, when I tell them that there's no standard, they decide, great, that means I'll just post whenever I want to. No, you gotta be consistent. An algorithm, if they can know that you're consistently getting this much traffic and that you're gonna act like this, well, now they know who they're gonna send to you next, right? So if you're not, if you're erratic, well, the algorithm's gonna treat you erratically, i.e. you're not gonna like it. <laughs> So, so be consistent. So because of that, I do give people a schedule and say, follow the schedule until you're ready to make your own schedule. Um, but that's just because people need something to start with. Now, I have noticed that the algorithm kind of starts all posts out the same way. So until you have like 4,000 fans, you can post two to four times a day. And it doesn't really affect your algorithm much because you're tiny. There's nobody there seeing it anyways. Um, and you're just like, you're seeding your audience and you're growing. As you get bigger, you want to add a couple more posts. Um, and then test your audience and see, are they engaging more when I add more? If they are, well then just keep doing it. Like, so the, the engagement rate stayed the same when I added another post. Well, now let's add another post. Oh, it went down, but just a little bit. Well, I've got five more chances now to get my content in front of you. Five more chances at the viral lottery. Well, we'll take it, right? So you just keep going until you aren't happy with the way your engagement rate is dropping. Cool, makes sense. Um, question from Paul. A lot of my clients are in fairly dull industries like accountancy. How do you get engagement in those kind of industries? Make it fun. What is accountants may not like their life in accounting because it's kind of boring. So what kind of things do they like? A silly dog, um, uh, uh, a Big Mac telling them how to save their money. Like that's kind of funny. So make it something where it's telling about who they are, but in a way that's not threatening and makes them look interesting because they probably want the world to know they're interesting. Absolutely. <laughs> um, question from Alex. Um, your I want to see virals in action button goes to a Facebook page or something that cannot be found. Maybe it's hidden. Oh, on the Rachel Miller page? Yeah, it, I broke the website and I just don't have the energy or time. Okay, this launch has been crap, guys. With my, I was like, I, I don't have time to fix the website right now. I'm like, what did I do? I, it was my own fault. I broke something on the website, so I'm sorry. Yeah, the link doesn't work. and. Uh, between my daughter breaking her arm and my emails going down and something else that happens, I can't even remember what the third thing was. 
uh, it's just low on the priority list. <laughs> I'm treading water this time. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, question from Tian. How do you spark conversation between um, users? So what type of content do you find will spark conversation in your posts? I gave it to you. I gave you 25 ideas. So literally take them and copy them. Like I'm literally telling you copy them, find it. Try and see if those help. So um, it's things like, what, do you, what are you having for dinner today? What are you accountants? What is the pet peeve um, in your office? What's your office pet peeve? Or what is the thing that you wish everyone who's filing their taxes on their own knew? What's the one mistake that every accountant that you um, fix their taxes for them um, after they goofed them up the first time, what's the one thing they all do that you wish other accountants didn't do? So think of those conversation starters, a, a fast action that they can say, where are you working in accountancy? Um, where are you an accountant? Are you a tax accountant or a personal accountant? Like just uh, something that takes a second for them to respond to you because you just want an engagement. And then if they respond to you, ask them an open-ended question. So, and I would ask them that as your person, not as the page, because Facebook likes person to person interaction. So make that relationship with your audience. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> the question from Paul, does it have to be hyper niche? Can you work a bit broader in terms of your kind of target market? Well, let me ask you, Paul, tell me three things about yourself, or I'll tell you in case you're not on anymore, or you're, no, you're not at the computer able to type. Um, we had a student <clears throat> inside of Moolah. She's, uh, she designs decks and she designs like landscaping. So she's like, I made a landscaping site so I can send people my landscaping plans and my, my deck contractors stuff because she's trying to get contractors for decks. And, um, but at the same time, I also like margaritas. So I throw some margarita recipes in there to make it fun. Well, how many deck contractors also love margaritas? Maybe fewer. Okay, then she also adds stuff about her and her dog. Well, how many deck contractors like margaritas and also wanna hear personal stuff about her life? Okay, keep going. Next thing, she adds some travel because she likes to travel, okay? So, but she's traveling. She's not necessarily telling you about deck. She's telling you about her travel experiences. And you're like, okay, but wait a second. Here's the thing. Nobody likes margaritas, travel, decks, and your dog as much as you do. There's nobody in the world that has that same mix, right? So instead, focus on decks or focus on margaritas and, or focus on, you know, and sell margarita machines or focus on one of those things. And then you can incorporate a little bit of the others. So like while you're eating margaritas, you can say, I eat margaritas on this cool deck and Hey, you want the plants? Here they are. You can talk about your deck and say on my deck, I drink margaritas. Here's a great recipe for drinking on your deck. So you want to make sure it's about that one topic. So people know what they're seeing when they come to you and they have a reason to keep following you. If, so, if you're a deck person, well, now you have a reason to follow her. But the likelihood of a deck person, maybe they like white wine or maybe they don't drink. Maybe they, you know, maybe they're keto people and they, they've got a very specific ketone drink that they drink all the time. And so they don't want to read about margaritas because you're tempting them. You know, who knows what that person's background is? You don't want to have any excuse for them to unlike or unfollow your page. Cool. So um, Paul's into marketing, finance, and craft beer, just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. The likelihood of a marketer also loving money. Well, they do love money, but they probably don't love accounting and counting their money. Right. Okay. Like me, I don't always know where my money is. I like looking at my bank total, but I don't know what it means. Does that make sense? So Absolutely. like, should I probably, but it's not fun. What's fun is the, the final number, right? Exactly. So, so maybe I probably wouldn't follow you for financial advice because that's not something I'm, I'm interested in, but would I follow you for marketing? Sure. I'm a marketing, like I could do that all day. Um, but would I follow you for craft beer? No, I, I don't drink beer. My husband does. Maybe I could tell him to follow you, but you, so for one of those things, you got to think about who your person is and try to focus on who they are and what, what would make them love you the most. Cool. Um, we've got a question from Gil. What do you make of Instagram? What do you think of that as part of your kind of, growth viral growth plans um instagram's good um i i've gotten I'm, i've had some growth on instagram we grew one of our accounts um by twelve thousand in like six months uh, it's good for product sales um i haven't because instagram doesn't drive traffic as easily it's hard for me to i like traffic so like i get a viral there that's great it didn't send me any traffic so like or it doesn't send nearly the amount of traffic that a facebook viral will so I'm a traffic whore. 
um, <laughs> I want I want the page clicks to come to me. So um, yeah, so we do that. Cool. So we're we're at one hour, Rachel. Can you believe it? We've zoomed wow. through so much. Um, really appreciate your time, your energy, um, and your knowledge and experience. It's been it's been awesome. I'm going to go back and listen to it because I missed most of it just trying to present. But um, I'm some, sure I talked some, really fast. <laughs> But there's some real gold dust there as well. So, you know, I'll definitely be um, applying that. So, um, you know, just to wrap up, let us know how people can find you, how they can follow you, how they can learn from you. Um, and also if like, I, I know you're on your own group, where can they join and I'm posting yeah. even more questions to get support from you? Yeah, if they want more questions, I'm in the group Page Strategies. So Facebook Page Strategies is my group and I'm in there all the time. And there's lots, we've got coaches in there. We've got lots of people who are growing businesses and it's a really happy place in the internet. So they love cheering other people on and um, sharing tips and stuff. So it's a very, a lot of marketers are kind of secret with their tips. This group's, they're not secret. They, they tell you it all. So it's really fun. Awesome. And um, any last words for people on the webinar before we leave? Yeah, just use those conversation starters and test adding more conversations to your page and see what that, what that does for your audience. So my guess is those people that then engage will see your future content and you'll slowly grow your audience. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel Miller. Um, just to wrap you, up, if you want to follow Rachel um, on page strategies, I put the link out into the Facebook Live. There's a PDF there. Have a look at that in terms of your 25 conversation starters. Absolutely awesome as well. And what I would say as a Facebook ads person, do consider your page and your organic potential as well, because Facebook ads is becoming even more competitive. It becomes even harder to kind of cut through and you need as many angles as possible. So don't discount organic, make it all work together. Um, and then just explode it from that as well. The two um, together is a really magical combination. Absolutely. So thank you, Depeche. Awesome. Thanks, Rachel. Have a great day. Thanks for everyone on the call. Bye.